Our solar system might have some more planets up its sleeve. We know about eight official planets, but they're not the only ones that survived the chaotic formation of our solar system 4.5 billion years ago. Astronomers say there are three categories of planets in our solar system. We're in the first one, the four rocky inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, that peacefully orbit the Sun. They're located within the main asteroid belt that separates Mars from Jupiter, which is in category number two. That one's a group of planets in the outer solar system, the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets have huge amounts of ice and gas around what scientists believe to be their rocky cores. The third group lies beyond the area where our local planets are, somewhere further than Neptune. It's the realm where you'll find dwarf planets, such as Pluto, Eris, and Sedna, and many smaller space bodies like comets. But new findings say there could be something else lurking in the dark, besides dwarf planets and tiny space bodies. Maybe even a new planet! Models scientists made say that our solar system used to have one or more rocky planets the size of Mars or Earth. Over time, these rocky wanderers interacted with the wide gravity fields of our gas giants. This kicked them into a far-out orbit, away from the neighborhood. The question is if one of those Mars-sized planets survived and could really be somewhere out there. Scientists have made simulations to see what potentially happened. These showed that in half of such cases where planets interact with the gravity of gas giants, they get ejected into interstellar space. In the remaining half, there's this one rogue planet left in an orbit similar to the ones the Kuiper Belt objects are following. There's only one thing left to do now. Find it. Astronomers found the loneliest planet in the universe. They were trying to find distant brown dwarf stars, or failed stars, ones that never become massive enough to start shining. Stars are born with big masses, which means they also have strong self-gravity. The star squeezes in on itself. That causes high internal temperatures and enables the star to shine. But instead, they found a lonely wanderer, CFBD SIR 2149. The planet is between 50 and 120 million years old and has a surface temperature of 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Compared to stars, that's cold. At first, scientists thought it could be a brown dwarf star, but in that case, it would be way older. This starless planet floats around through space, passing only 130 light years away from our planet. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 100,000 light years wide, so that's relatively close. The lonely traveler is actually a gas giant, four to seven times bigger than Jupiter. Maybe it was kicked out from its own solar system because of gravitational forces, or getting into another planet's orbit. Or it was formed away from its parent star. Far beyond Pluto, on the edge of our solar system, there's a space body about as big as Pluto, but a little bit colder and way denser. It's probably a big rocky body covered in a thin icy mantle. It's the dwarf planet Eris. Both Pluto and Eris occupy the Kuiper Belt, which is the distant ring of frigid space bodies that lies beyond Neptune. A day there lasts 25.9 hours, pretty similar to Earth. But Eris circles our Sun in the distance three times farther than Pluto, which means its year is pretty long, 557 Earth years. Eris has a bright, icy surface. It's one of the most reflective bodies in our solar system. It bounces back more than 95% of the light that strikes it. Somewhere out there, even farther, there's a super Saturn, J1407b, much larger than Jupiter or Saturn. It's an exoplanet, which means a planet that orbits a star other than our Sun. Super Saturn is 434 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Centaurus. It's the only exoplanet we know about with rings similar to Saturn. It actually has a huge ring system, 200 times bigger than Saturn's rings. There are more than 30 rings, each of them tens of millions of miles in diameter. There are gaps in the rings, which means there could be some interesting satellites, exomoons, around. If this super Saturn could swap places with our regular Saturn, its rings would absolutely dominate our sky. You could look up and easily see them. The view would be amazing, because they would appear much bigger than a full moon. Scientists have found thousands of planets outside of our solar system. 
Some are dense as iron, while others are airy and light. And then there's the water world, GJ1214b, a steamy world, bigger than Earth and smaller than Uranus, 40 light years away from us in the constellation of Ophiuchus. It's a watery planet surrounded by a thick atmosphere, 2.7 times Earth's diameter and almost seven times heavier than our home planet. It was most likely formed somewhere farther from its star, where there was plenty of water ice, but later migrated to where it is today. Its surface temperature is 440 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too hot to host life like on Earth. It also has much less rock and much more water than our planet. Imagine a planet with no land, but only endless oceans covering all of its surface. High pressures and temperatures would form things like superfluid water or hot ice some pretty exotic materials that we can't see on our planet. Gliese 436b. It's a Neptune-sized exoplanet 30 light years away from our planet in the constellation of Leo. It makes one full orbit around its star in a little more than two days. This planet defies the laws of physics. It orbits its star, Gliese 436, which is smaller, cooler, and less luminous than our sun, at a distance 15 times closer than Mercury is to the sun. When we typically think of ice, we picture a frozen cube. But this planet has an icy surface, even though the temperature there is 980 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is way above the melting point, but the ice remains solid and burning hot. This happens because of very strong gravity. It compresses the water vapor in the atmosphere into solid ice. The pressure here doesn't allow the ice to melt, no matter how hot the surface is. Now imagine being on a mysterious planet and it suddenly starts raining sapphires and rubies. One distant exoplanet, Hat P7b, a gas giant 1,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Cygnus and 16 times bigger, has specific weather and pretty violent storms. Rubies and sapphires are scattered across the planet when it's raining. On the planet's night side, there's a high amount of corundum in the atmosphere. And corundum is what mineral gems such as sapphires and rubies are made of. Clouds of corundum give such an amazing view. The planet is plagued by severe winds that often turn into powerful storms that push huge masses of those clouds across the planet. Although the planet is uninhabitable, it would certainly be cool to come there and pick up some gems. Still, the weather is pretty wild. Plus, the temperatures are over 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. By comparison, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, and its temperature is only 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking over the expanse of space, you can see a beautiful little blue dot in the endless darkness. It's an exoplanet, HD 189733b, that lies 63 light years from us in the constellation of Volpecula. But it's way hotter and larger than our planet, around the size of Jupiter and it completes its orbit around its host star in only 2.2 Earth days. That orbit is so close that the planet is most likely tidally locked. That means it's always showing only one face to its star, like our moon always shows one side to Earth. The weather here is crazy. The winds blow at up to 5,400 miles per hour, which is seven times the speed of sound. The fastest wind on Earth only hit the mark of 230 miles per hour. And it gets better. The rain here is not made of water, but of molten glass. Clouds are made of silicate atoms and particles. They are the key element that gives the planet its cobalt blue color, not the reflection of oceans, which is the case with Earth. Earth used to be purple. Today, even when you look at our planet from space, you see a lot of green. The green we see in nature is there because of photosynthesis, the process where plants transform energy coming from the sun into energy they need to live and to produce oxygen for us. The main part of the process that gives plants the green color is the chlorophyll pigment. A long time ago, instead of chlorophyll, there was a molecule called retinol. Its pigments absorb yellow and green light and turn it into red and blue. So the Earth was more purple. And then there's a pink planet, GJ504b, far away from us in the Virgo constellation, four times more massive than Jupiter. It's a newly formed exoplanet, around 160 million years old. By comparison, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. If we could go there, we would see an incredible world that glows from the heat of its formation. Everything around you would be colored magenta.